Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be doing three Halloween themed chibi characters side by side. I'm going to show you how to draw a Frankenstein chibi, a witch chibi, and finally a mummy chibi. And what I've done here is just put a kind of a rectangle in place for those who want to work at the same size that I'm working at. It is about six and a half inches uh, wide. That works out to around sixteen and a half inches in centimeters, and then it's uh, three and a half inches tall, which works out to almost exactly nine uh, centimeters top to bottom. So what I'm going to do is in time lapse I am going to draw the guidelines of the Frankenstein character, and then I'll come back to sort of uh, give you some tips about that. All right, so you can see that I'm doing quite an exaggerated style of chibi drawing here with the head uh, almost equal to the size of the body. We're not going to be trying to do like uh, highly detailed artwork here. This is all about keeping it fun and cute. And what I'm going to do is uh, get these guidelines in for where the uh, eyes are going to go. I suppose I should say a little more about the shape of the head, which because it's Frankenstein is quite unusually flat on the top and kind of jutting forward in the forehead. Um, normally I would never draw a chibi head shape like this, but this is Frankenstein. He's supposed to be like that. Another thing here is that the feet, when we get to the feet, I've given him these big sort of, sort of clod hopper boots which I would never normally do uh, with a chibi character. But let's go ahead and start uh, drawing in the eyes. I'm going to do this as much of this real time as I can. Um, I thought because it's Frankenstein, heavy eyelids would be appropriate for this character. So I'm doing like a very tight little um, uh, oval here for the eye that's farther away, which is you know very common for what I do when I'm drawing chibi characters. And then the one over here is going to be more... Um, of a standard oval sort of egg shape. Uh, but again, leaving space for these heavy drooping eyelids, which to me I think sort of helps convey that idea of uh, Frankenstein. Uh, so I'm going to give him unusually thick eyebrows for a chibi character. Usually I minimize the eyebrows, but again I think in the case of a uh, Frankenstein character it seems somehow appropriate to uh, give him big, thick, bushy eyebrows. And I'm doing a simple guideline across here, which I'm actually going to change into a zigzagging line. Again, not trying to draw actual human hair, but um, more of like a symbol almost. Uh, greatly simplifying everything. I think this video might be nice for like younger uh, artists out there or real beginners who are a little uh, unsure of themselves in terms of details. Um, because I really am trying to keep it as simple as possible. Here's the ears, a little bit low on the head, which I very often do. Uh, and then maybe one line across like that and another line underneath is my way of drawing the ears when I'm trying to simplify things. We'll put just a little dot here for the nose, pretty near to where that far eye is. And uh, though we wouldn't normally have Frankenstein smiling, <laughs> why not? It's chibi time. We'll keep, we'll put up a happy smiling face on there. Now the neck of a chibi is very often not in full view, but I thought because so much of um, the these bolts, you know, the, so much of the Frankenstein design comes down to these bolts that jut out of the neck, so I, I have made the neck sort of big enough so that I can draw these two bolts, again, in super simplified cartoony fashion, jutting out of his neck. Now it seems to me like from the movies, uh, we got the, used to this idea of him wearing a coat of some kind uh, uh, and then maybe just sort of a jagged, ripped up shirt underneath that. I'm not sure if the movie version of Frankenstein had like patches on his clothes, but somehow that strikes me as something that, that works for a, uh, a chibi Frankenstein character. So I'm going to draw a couple of uh, little patches there, maybe on the knee, another one down here. Again, you can see keeping it quite spontaneous here, and I thought just to keep this in the spirit of Halloween, how about if he's uh, holding a jack-o'-lantern trick-or-treat <laughs> basket because Frankenstein needs his Tootsie Rolls. Is that what is that his 
candy of choice? Hard to say. Get back to me on that. Uh, but yeah, I'm just dashing in a quick little cute uh, drawing of a jack-o'-lantern there. And then, like I said, unusually uh, big boots. Uh, again, this to me is sort of in keeping with the idea of Frankenstein. I see him as having big clodhopper uh, boots, and that's why I'm taking the somewhat unusual step of drawing uh, big feet on this character. You're going to see considerably smaller feet on the other two characters. Speaking of which, it's time for us to go ahead and draw the uh, rough guideline of the witch. Okay, so we got the basic guidelines here of the witch, but you know, I realized that I forgot uh, a crucial detail of adding the um, scars on Frankenstein. So let's go ahead and take care of that, get one or two fr scars across the face. That seems to be a pretty crucial little aspect of that character design. Uh, but now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about these basic guidelines for the witch character. Um, you can see that uh, the, the, the hat that I've placed on top of her head is not like a super uh, tall, pointy style, but sort of crooked and leaning over to one side. That really is maybe more of a function of fitting it within the frame of this uh, video. Uh, you could certainly make it a tall, pointy uh, hat if you wanted to, but speaking of hats, let's go ahead and put in that kind of uh, binding piece that goes across the uh, middle of the hat there, and I'm going to put a buckle, a cute little buckle there, to uh, sort of finish that off. Um, I made this line here kind of wavy to sort of suggest floppy cloth. Uh, to me that just sort of looks a little more attractive. Um, but let's go ahead and get the eyes in place. Now I'm not going to do what I did for the other one with the um, droopy eyelids. I think the we can have our witch character have um, more open eyes. Uh, but I'm, I've done like I did over here. I give her the wide um, oval on one side and then a slightly tighter oval. You could flatten the bottom here if you want to. makes the character look like they're smiling a little more. Um, and over here I generally show a little more of the sort of contour of the eyelash area than I do over here, just because of the angle of the pose. Um, I guess both of these eyes, uh, both of these characters' eyes are going to end up having a highlight of some kind, so I'm going to go ahead and put in a little circle there on both characters. Uh, but I think with her eyes I might go ahead and put um, a suggestion of the pupil in here. And, you know, I think this will be dealt with more at the coloring stage. Um, I'll get uh, thin little eyebrows, as I said, uh, the, the super thick eyebrows on the uh, Frankenstein was more a function of that character style. Whereas for this chibi witch, I think I'm going to stay away from thick uh, eyebrows. But I want to have her have sort of simple bangs coming down here. And then maybe the hair um, splits into uh, pigtails, like big thick uh, pigtails. I think what I'll do is I'll have just a hint of the bottom of her ear that's kind of concealed by the hair as it comes down. Uh, and you see me erasing away the, the hat to kind of get that where it needs to be. Let's go ahead while we're at it and draw this other pigtail over here really quite thick, and then maybe held together by what will eventually be little black uh, ribbons. I'll give her slightly uh, chopped off looking hair at the bottom of the pigtails. And um, let's go ahead and put in a little dot for the nose. And maybe instead of showing her teeth, she's just giving us a cute little smile right there. Um, she probably has some kind of a collar on her shirt. I'm going to go ahead and make that. Maybe it'll be like a white collar compared to the black of the rest of the clothes. Maybe she even has white cuffs. That might be cute. And of course she's got to be holding a broom. I mean, come on, she's a witch. So what I'm going to do is put in a slightly um, zigzaggy uh, twisted, gnarled old uh, broomstick here. 
which makes it look more like a witch's broomstick rather than just an ordinary broomstick. And of course, when I think of a uh, witch's broomstick, I also think of these slightly wild um, bristles at the bottom instead of a tame uh, brooms like you would see at the, the hardware store or whatever. I'm going to give her tiny little black uh, boots or shoes. It's a little hard to see, but as I said, you know, normally this is how I draw the um, feet of a chibi character, keep them very small. And why not give her the striped, classic striped leggings that somehow just says cute witch to me. And I suppose we have got um, everything we need really for that character and that allows me to move on to our final character which should be fun, the mummy character drawn uh, in chibi form. So you can see I tried to give my uh, mummy that classic uh, mummy pose with the arms outstretched. Probably another thing that comes from the old Hollywood movies, this idea of uh, mummies walking with their arms out like that. Um, uh, but again, feet relatively small uh, compared to Frankenstein over there. And of course we got a nice rounded uh, top of the head rather than the flat. Uh, top head that we have over there. Let's go ahead and start getting, uh, well, I'm going to put the basics of the eyes in place. Now, when you're doing a chibi uh, mummy character, you are faced with a slight challenge in terms of, uh, you know, you want to give facial features, but they should be partially hidden by the bandages uh, or strips of cloth that a mummy uh, has wrapping around the head. So I've put in the basics of uh, chibi eyes here and then I'm gonna kind of make the lines of the... is it bandages or just cloth? Strips of cloth? Uh, go right across um, and sort of conveniently move around the eyes. Uh, seems to me like a big uh, thick almost X of uh, crossed cloth here could take care of that part between. Um, I'll go ahead and put in highlights on the eyes and maybe uh, give you some sense of um, you know darkening that area in a bit um, so as to make them look more like eyes rather than just blank circles. You could make them just blank circles, but I figure if they're dark, they will uh, pop out against the uh, sort of white or yellowed uh, bandages. And then, yeah, after that, you're kind of free to just start dashing in lines um, that uh, look as if they are wrapped around and around uh, the character's head. But one thing that you can do to make it look more uh, mummy-like, seems to me, is to have some strips uh, actually kind of coming unraveled and I think that is going to add a lot of uh, life to your um, chibi mummy characters uh, face and what I am going to do is actually you can see if I can get away with a little cute looking smile because chibi characters even when they're hideous <laughs> mummies they're still they still find a way of being cute so I'm going to get a cute little smiling mouth in there And uh, yeah, you can see I'm not, there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to these bandages. I'm just kind of zipping them in here and there. But I do think, as I said, that uh, having a little stray pieces of uh, cloth coming off can add quite a lot to the liveliness of your drawing. And just that feeling that, uh, you know, th this is, uh, mummies are supposed to be these centuries old characters come back to life so uh, having this sort of raggedy unraveling look to some of the bandages I think helps a lot with that. Notice that the because the head is larger the bandages are larger correspondingly and then when we get down to the body I'm making uh, you know around the arms and so forth I'm making these lines more tightly packed just just as a function of matching the uh, relative size of the body parts. 
And that is bringing us near to the end of um, the, what the real heart and soul of this video is, and that is, you know, putting these guidelines in place, showing you real time as much as I could how to um, do uh, drawings of these cute little characters. I am going to have to zip through the coloring process in time lapse, but I can tell you it's going to be mostly watercolor uh, in my case, and maybe a little colored pencil to finish it off. You, are, of course, could uh, prefer to work with um, markers, do the whole thing in just colored pencil, do it all digitally. It's all up to you, but how about uh, some clouds of dust <laughs> coming off of our marching mummy character to, again, reflect that sort of ancient history vibe. And there you go, my friends. Pretty much done with all three of those characters, and at least in terms of the guidelines. Let's go ahead and add some color all in time lapse, and then I'll be back with a few final words. All right, well, there you see my fully colored uh, version of the illustrations. One thing I noticed is when I got to the inking stage, I started inking uh, the mummy character with very jagged lines, and so the inking actually becomes uh, an important aspect uh, of the artwork with this one in terms of making, showing that age, uh, you know, where the other characters have sort of smoother lines. This, these ink lines are quite jagged. Uh, so that's a little tip for you there. Um, but of course I cannot be done with this illustration until I add the blushies. So we're going to give our witch characters some nice pink blushies. I feel like uh, for uh, Frankenstein, they can't be pink, they've got to be green uh, blushies. It's the only thing that makes sense to me, so I'm going to go in there with the green. And, uh, I don't know, I mean, the blushies are underneath the bandages, guys. You're just going to have to believe me. They are there. They are there. <laughs> but, give me just a moment, I'm going to go ahead and grab my books. So that I can thank anyone who has supported me by getting them, like the comic book lesson, my very latest uh, book, a graphic novel that shows you how to make comics. Chibi, of course, I got a whole book that's devoted to this chibi style that you saw me using today. And we can't forget Mastering Manga 1, 2, and 3, my whole series of books, um, uh, drawing in the manga style. But I think it's time for me to lay down this pen. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.